Welcome. Today in the Painter's Talk, we are having Alice Mazzelli. Alice is a calligrapher and a lettering artist. And I have the pleasure of meeting Alice in Porto when we were in the Letterheads in 2019. And Alice have been doing uh, calligraphy as a professional for more than seven years. And she's going to tell us the story of how she left the security of his, her job in an agency and how did she turn her passion into her business. So Alice, welcome and thank you very much for being here. Hi, thanks a lot for having me. And it's, it's a pleasure to be talking to you and to all the audience uh, about this journey. So Lovely, thanks. great, thank you. Ali, tell us a little bit about you. What's your background? Where are you from? Where are you at the moment? Right, so I always had an interest for letters. Since I was a child, like my dad used to do um, like big plants, like architect's plants, and mm -hmm. he used to write very neat, very nicely on this uh, paper. And I used to ask him like if I could copy it and just try to make like really neat letters. So for me, mm -hmm. letters always been a game. And then around uh, probably 12, something like that, that was in the 90s, uh, the hip hop scene was kind of very alive at the time, it was the golden age. And here where I'm from in Italy, uh, there was quite a lot of graffiti uh, writing and all of the scene. So, I kind of got into it and started doing a little bit, not as much as I should have done because I used to be lots on paper and mm -hmm. a little bit on wall, but um, not as much. Mm -hmm. from the, but from there, I really got a sense of um, writing and the evolution really of the letter. That's what always interested me, even though I did not kind of understood it and pursue it straight away. Okay. After that, because I, at 18, I moved to London mm -hmm. and I applied to art school because I couldn't study art in Italy. So I moved to London. There was a whole new world, a whole different language and lots of inspiration, lots of things to do and to learn. Uh, so I studied illustration. And even though everyone told me, oh, you should do typography because your portfolio is just letter forms. But I was like, no, I want to do something else. <laughs> And but then, yeah, I ended up studying typography by myself. And after that, I went to work in an agency after doing some work experience and where I was doing design for prints. So again, what interested me was typography and lettering. And after that, uh, started doing calligraphy by myself, then an evening class. And then I started doing calligraphy professionally after that and quitting the job in the agency. But wow. I'll leave that for later. <laughs> cool, perfect. And just out of curiosity, where are you right now? Oh, right now I'm in back in Italy because I've been living in London for 18 years, so quite a long time. And I used to come back here maybe just once or twice a year. But I felt probably because of COVID time as well that you feel you have a different experience of the world, that the, your routine sort of changed quite a lot. I ended up spending it uh, four months in a flat in Madrid because my boyfriend is, uh, is from Venezuela, but he lives in Madrid, he's been living in Madrid for a while. So I spent quite a long time there in a small flat and I just needed the nature and I needed the sun and the sea and I have all of that here. So oh, I decided yeah, okay. to go back to Italy. So now I'm in Italy and I got a studio space in a medieval building. So going back to history and my medieval passion. <laughs> <laughs> and which is great because my medieval building they're made out of these bricks that you can mm -hmm. see around. And outside is super hot. It's like 30 degrees. Oh, wow. And in here, it's kind of fresh. And I don't have air conditioning. So it's. Ah, oh, that's good. lovely. And yeah. will you mind to show us your studio? Of course. I'll show you a little bit around. 
So this interesting thing, it was a medieval, is a medieval building, but it used to be a Jamaican restaurant. Okay. That's why there's <laughs> kind of like decoration of the <laughs> gel, <laughs> like, uh, the tiles or with the uh, Jamaican colors. And I uh, decided to have my desk in the counter. Here is my uh, desk, which it was the counter and it's perfect because I can sit with, with my stool there and have lots of space underneath for all my paints. And there there's more space again. <laughs> and it's also thing that I have some glass here, which I love glass. So for me, it was perfect. They asked me if I wanted to take it out, but I didn't want to. And I have a little kitchen space over there. It's always useful. Here, there's a bit of an exhibition That's space, sweet. and I'm sharing uh, the, the space, obviously, with my boyfriend, which is there working at the computer. Mm -hmm. And he does those beautiful paintings that we put okay. up. So some there, some over there. And here we made, we just made it recently this little exhibition of the work we do, some lino cuts, some lettering, some books, posters. And yeah, there's the, there's the space. I love Another it. Turn around. And here we go. Wow, well, really pretty studio. I love it, Thank full you. of colors and art. So great, congrats for such a beautiful space. Thank you. <laughs> Great. So, Ali, you say that your background was illustration, right? So, yeah. how is that you get into the world of letters more in depth? Uh, just because I'm really passionate about letters. I try to draw, but I, it's not something that I can connect with as much as letters. I think doing that, doing illustration, studying illustration, made me realize that really what, what my passion is, uh, it's lettering and letters, all kinds, from typography to graffiti, to historical, to uh, Phoenician letters, uh, all the historical things coming from the hieroglyphs of the Egyptians. So that's really what my main interest is. And that's why, I was able to, to just push and pursue the, that career. <laughs> so, oh, wow, yeah. cool. So Ali, you were working in an agency, right? This yeah, is back in yeah, London. Yeah. So yeah. how is that you leave the work in an agency to do uh, an apprenticeship? Uh, so yeah, I was doing this even in class um, while I was working in the agency. And uh, the, the teacher told me that a calligrapher got in touch with him, uh, asking if anyone in the course would be interested to be an apprentice, a calligraphy apprentice. And uh, at the same time, I, I had a, a weekend with Mike Mayer, his, his first workshop in London. So everyone was like mega excited. And I met lots of like mega interesting people uh, doing lettering. And for me, it was like, wow, maybe I can just, you know, do that as a freelancer. I don't have to work in the agency. So I started thinking, okay, maybe, maybe I can give it a go because what do I have to lose? I can always get another graphic design job. And I, it, it coincides. I think there were lots of uh, little factors that uh, helped uh, taking this decision. Because also I went to Istanbul, mm -hmm. uh, this holiday plan. And there, there's lots of writing. So there's all the mosques um, full of writing because there, obviously, they cannot depict God in, a, in, in, in an image. Mm -hmm. So they're writing the Quran and the, the writing is very decorative. And I was in love with this uh, Arabic uh, calligraphy. Mm -hmm. Then I saw a very old one, which is called Kufic, that for me is a um, beautiful, beautiful uh, form of letters. It's very, very old. It, it comes before Arabic. But for me, it's a big inspiration even right now. So mm -hmm. after seeing all of this, I took the decision, okay, I'm going to come back 
and give my notice at the agency and take the opportunity to take this apprenticeship that the calligrapher they asked me to do the apprenticeship was Paul Antonio, mm -hmm. which is uh, the, the calligrapher you mentioned before, uh, works in London and he has a huge background, huge, huge background in uh, historical calligraphy, social calligraphy that it's basically writing place cards, invitation, all these kind of events. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I gave my notice and I started uh, being an apprentice with, with Paul. The, at the cool. beginning, it was a bit like Karate Kids because I had to uh, draw straight line, diagonal line, straight line, diagonal line and circles for about a month, I would say. Wow. So it was all that. And so finding... Uh, um, a way of creating a connection with the pen and the, the mind. So coming down, because obviously we come from a world which is very fast, mm -hmm. especially working in agencies, working with computers, um, make us very nervous in a way, anxious and uh, having to do everything really fast. So I think that was a way of kind of getting in the mindset of having to take on something that is a bit from the past now mm -hmm. yeah. even though it shouldn't be because I'm the first one saying that we should all do it doesn't matter because straight line I mean even if they're not mega straight taking a pencil and moving your arm is something that we can all do so it's a really well, good way to, rela to relax mm -hmm. and taking a, a bit back uh, this connection that we can have with our mind and our body. So it's, it's a really good way of starting even your day. Yeah. I remember when I also started doing first calligraphy. Uh, I remember that they always told you, stroke down, inhale, stroke up, yeah. exhale. And... Trying actually I do, to I do exhale and inhale. How do I do it? Probably, In yeah, something like that. But it was yeah. one stroke, one inhalation, and the other one an exhalation. To, to breathe. Yeah. And if you indeed manage to do it, it's kind of you enter into a trance. Yeah. And it turns kind of even meditative. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It's really, it is. really nice to calm down for me if i'm stressed is that i have to get, get back to that kind of exercise yeah. and try to simplify things and you kind of forget about the rest of the words and it's all good again <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> wow but what you were saying that doing lines and circles diagonals for a month it really also takes your patience yeah yeah i mean in between there was obviously a huge library of all kinds of book about lettering so uh -huh. i'll keep my interest up just by every hour taking a break looking at mm, books on medieval manuscripts on so for me it was very much about okay that's now i have the opportunity mm -hmm. of investing sometimes in something that i have a huge interest on yeah so it's obviously about the practical side of it, which mm -hmm. I felt that I really needed to find this connection again, because I stopped working in the agency, I stopped drawing. I, I mean, I was drawing a little bit, but not as much. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of have to find that, um, that connection again. Uh, and it's just practice. I mean, there's mm -hmm. no real, real lettering, you know, and calligraphy, there's no... Uh, magic, uh, yeah, um, nothing or oh, shortcuts. Yeah. No, no, that's no. practice. No, in no, three, no. You cannot achieve uh, more than something because you, you still need to understand certain letters and they have to kind of sit within you, within your brain, your mu muscle memory, and all of yeah. that. So it's something that really takes time. Definitely, it takes time, and I think that. That's also something that people that just start, they kind of forget about it. As you say, there are no shortcuts. I remember yeah. I start, I passed 
months doing line A, A3 or A4 pages, just the same letter, one and over and over again. And people told me, are you not tired? But it's crazy. Every letter I could see, oh, it didn't work here. I yeah. feel a lot of pressure here. I released too fast. Um, the angle is wrong. And you turn super critical, but there is a point like that magical click. Yeah, exactly. It's really difficult to say when, how, or why, but eventually it happens. And I think that it happens with calligraphy, with hand lettering, and also with sign painting. Yeah. But the only solution is keep the brush wet and keep the pen in your hand or keep doing it. So yeah. how, is a, how was a day working with Paul? Uh, well, at the beginning, as I said, the first few months were mainly uh, practice because obviously like my calligraphy was terrible uh, at the time and uh, practice is really important. Then I think working in a studio which uh, takes commissions, it's very important for understanding the flow of how to deal with different kinds of paper, different kinds of ink, different size, uh, all these factors that can influence the writing. And then there's the writing. The writing usually is like, the, okay, yeah, now I can write fine. So you need system, like for example, to dry all the place cards while you cannot just wait for each place card to dry. So you can, I used to have like CD racks. So I used to mm -hmm. ask my, all my friends like, oh, do you have any CD racks? <laughs> and you can yeah. dry them. Then you settle so, them, yeah. Uh, there. And then obviously you have to remember to take breaks, to sit up, because if you, uh, the, the posture is very important because if you have to write for eight to 10 hours, uh, like I used to do, uh, you you feel it. <laughs> yeah. If you're sitting badly, if you put in all your weight on this arm, like I used to do, I used to just pull my arm and pull slightly bits of the weight on this arm, and I could feel it straight away. So it's it's all adjustment that kind of force you to to yeah. sit properly, to think about breathing, to think about to think about posture. So it's, it's very interesting that way. And I learned a lot in the sense of dealing with different material, dealing with uh, different inks, paper, because obviously if you get an invitation, they won't always be on the same paper. There's mm -hmm. different formats. Yeah. So they're setting up and like more technical things, how to deal with nibs, because at the beginning, as you know, it's, it's not the, the yeah. easiest thing to get the ink to flow the reservoir because sometimes you have to understand as well if it's the two folds because sometimes there's nibs especially with the pointed nibs mm -hmm. that are working and some that are not working and it's not your fault so you have to understand when it's your fault and when it's not your fault yeah so yeah crazy yeah. so Ali um you were doing this with Paul for a year and if there is something that you could share with us about what you learned with him, what it will be? Uh, well, lots of historical, like we used to talk about calligraphy all day. So I learned lots of like historical background to all the scripts because mm -hmm. he will know a lot. And his methods, uh, it's very um, technical which is the opposite of mine. So for me, it was really good because it was the first time that I was forced to do something um, very specific to follow certain rules that anyway in calligraphy you have to have at the beginning. Then mm -hmm. once you have the rules, once you know how to deal with the rules, you can say, okay, I decide to do something else, but you need that basic. You yeah. cannot think of doing flourishing before learning how to use a pointed nib. Absolutely. So yeah. All these steps are very important. As we were saying before, there's no shortcuts. If you want to be a professional uh, lettering artist, calligrapher, sign painter, whatever, you need to go through all these steps. It's essential because uh, it's, it's what you, you need to be ready uh, for 
anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So Ali, will you show us uh, any calligraphy? Of course. Uh, I can show you my tools that are Lovely. All my favorite favorites. They're, they're all kind of favorites. So here, as we were saying, I thought it would be interesting to show you these. Uh, this is a paper, it's called, it's like a Chinese paper. And the interesting thing about it's that, um, let me get some water, is that you can practice with a flat brush and then it goes away. So for example, here, I just have some water. Mm -hmm. And if I write on it, for example, let's do, you can see the writing, right? Yeah. But in a minute, it will disappear. As you can see, it disappears. So it's really good for practicing how to use a brush because you don't have to just use lots, lots of pieces of paper like I, I did. Uh -huh. And you can try to understand how the brush works. And it's a smooth paper? Yeah, this is very smooth. Yeah. Oh, wow. And what's the name of the paper again? I think it's called Buddha paper. Oh, good to know. I didn't know this. Yeah, it's, it's very good. And you'll find it as well. I have this one, which is it's very cheap if you order it online. You see, like that's the proper Chinese because they use it to practice. Mm -hmm. And you have some reference as well. So you can have an excise, specific excise. So for example, mm. it's, it's really good for practicing is great. I will, I will recommend it to, to start with. It's really good because then it just goes away. Wow. And it lasts so, long? It lasts long? Like the well, paper? It, just a few. Oh, the, the paper, yes. Yeah, it lasts a lot. This one I haven't been treating very nicely, but I have some other ones that have been treating really good and it lasts for a long time. If you just use water and you make sure that there's, there's no ink mm -hmm. in the water and on the brush as well, the brush has to be like, I have this brush that I just use for this. For and example. will it work also with point nibs? Like Calligraphy? No, I don't, I don't think so. I haven't tried, but you can use it with pointed uh, brushes. Yeah. Which is kind of similar. Will be more like the Japanese. Yeah. So you can try to do something that it's closer to, to copper plates. So yeah. you can practice the pointed brush as well. Oh, lovely. So that, yeah, that's something that it's, it's really good because I think with the practice, because I, I have to admit, I'm a bit lazy sometimes setting things up. And with that, I don't need to prepare ink or wash the, the brush after. So it's a really way to practice kind of like Roman capitals, Mm -hmm. or things with a brush as well like for sign painting and you don't have to clean after the brush you don't have to do lots of setup you throw out the paper you just do everything there so it's it's very good to to start with yeah oh, and lovely. For, for the other tools one of my favorite thing is the quill mm -hmm. uh, wow, beautiful. That is, yeah this one is um swan Mm -hmm. and it's beautiful to work on vellum for example on this who made it vellum. for you and brody because i'm just coming from a workshop with him that is like the first 
workshop that it's with the actual person. So it's the first in two years, I think, that I'm doing, and it was great. So he made some quills for us, and I'm uh -huh. really happy because all my quills are still in London because I still uh -huh. haven't been able to, to go to London. Oh, I feel you. Two years, so imagine. <laughs> I am in the same position. <laughs> I have a yeah. lot of things in the Netherlands still. So it is, it takes a little bit to start because it, it should be sharpened now, but, but it's a very nice tool. So I love writing kind of like Gothic style letters, for example, with a quill. Because you can feel it's like a very medieval tool. It is, and yeah made for these kind of like gothic letters well you mind well, showing know. us closer what you just wrote yeah well i didn't write much but yeah i can perfect. show you a bit more maybe i use a bigger tool so you can see better what i'm doing so for example a very interesting tool as well is this is an automatic oh. pen there's nothing automatic about it, it's just the name. <laughs> <laughs> so you just, you have to still dip it in the ink. <laughs> and then you get like huge letters. So I make um, Gothic A. So you have to keep on dipping because this one is quite a big pen. So it's when you, when you start, it's quite important to work big because you can see all the mistakes better. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you can kind of um, take it at this beginning and, and, and improve it. Or you can do italic with it. I don't, I'm not a big fan of doing italic with this automatic pen because you cannot twist it as much mm -hmm. you have to do it manually well if you have a nib it's a bit uh, easier because mm -hmm. you can apply a bit of pressure so you can yeah. really have uh, different weights which makes the letter more sensual let's say mm -hmm. So here is all about the twisting. So it's more like a flat brush. Uh -huh. Even though a brush, it has that um, possibility of expanding a little bit more. Yeah. And another tool that I really like that I discovered uh, quite recently, but it's very old, is this mm. nib that makes like a monoline. So a massive monoline. Yeah, yeah. Can be, uh, can write. Right. something you see it's it's very it's lots of fun i, I like it because it's it's kind of fun obviously you have to think of the endings mm -hmm. so it takes a little bit to get used to but it's it's, it's quite fun you have lots of possibility with this to make some really nice monoline letters or even cursive. So something like these. So it's, it's quite fun to, to use. Mm -hmm. And then obviously one of my favorite tools, which is the, 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 um, oh. the rule. Yeah. You give a really cool effect to the letter. Oh yeah. So. It's so immediate and like you have to be very sure. Like, so for this as well, like at the beginning, I, I was not a huge fan because if you go very slow, you won't get a nice effect. So you have to be mm -hmm. kind of fast and sure of where you're going. And then as well, it comes with practice. Mm -hmm. You 
You know, there is where I think that it's super important to learn to write with the full arm. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, many people yeah, that is yeah. starting, they just write like with the, just moving like the hand. Yeah. But the challenge is when you include the elbow and then when you include the shoulder. For yeah, a tool cool. like this one, you need to be able to do really big movements and in the flow of your movement is the flow of the stroke. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Like if I have to teach some lesson, like sometimes I teach a lesson for beginners because I, I am no in position to teach any calligraphers. Um, I, I quite like to, to get people started because uh, it's, it's really important to know like the basics first. And one mm -hmm. of the main things, it's the breathing, uh, the posture, and exactly using stop using the finger and just using the arm uh -huh. so using a big tool it's really important i usually like get people started just moving around the page without mm -hmm. writing anything so you can feel it that you have the potential of using the whole arm mm -hmm. instead of just this because the finger is so limiting really oh, yeah. really limiting. Yeah, it's, it's what you just show. I mean, what you can do with your finger is just this. What you can do with your elbow is this. But what you can do with your arm is a flow, a complete yeah. flourishing, for yeah. instance. Of course. And so one of my favorite nibs uh, for uh, the, the chisel one, the square edge, is the browser. Because again, I'm a bit lazy and, uh, <laughs> and it has a reservoir already mm -hmm. so some other ones you have to sleep in the reservoir and sometimes work sometimes it's too tight and you have to adjust it so this one i found that it's quite nice because it's still flexible um reliable so with these you well i don't know i had so many styles that i like it's difficult to to say uh, which one? <laughs> uh, oh, the, the Gothic cursive is something I quite like. That it goes like this. Maybe I'll put it slightly closer so you can see a bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, what can I write? Ah, uh, nice. No. There's no shortcuts. That's what I'm gonna write. So this is kind of revisited. There's a bit of a gothic, gothic cursive. lovely thank you i love this e i, um, I found yeah. it in a manuscript in a manuscript they were using this because that was like kind of the original e then then they joined and i found it uh, i think it's beautiful so i've been using it <laughs> it is really beautiful ali something that i noticed from your work is that it has a lot of character and i think that you pass from learning a proper copper play style to be able just to break down all the rules and create something very personal. So, uh, yeah. Will you say that all your studies about the history of writing, all the type, the different types of um, writing styles have affect your own style? Of course, I mean, uh, people ask me, oh, how um, you so uh, talented, or like you, you can come up with all these letters, but I didn't come up with any letters. I just look at manuscripts since um, Egyptian mm -hmm. <laughs> times, since the, there were evolution of letters and, and just uh look at them and copy them and when you copy something especially in lettering you make it yourself so even in uh, medieval manuscripts you can tell if it's the same person writing a, a whole manuscript 
or is someone else yeah because everyone yeah. has uh, such a unique writing and that's what fascinates me as well to teach uh, mm-hmm. it, for me it's super important that people can find something that reflects who they are through their writing yeah. so uh, I'm very very interesting because we can all write and um sorry i'm really bad at talking and writing at the same time well, it's so really difficult <laughs> <laughs> then you do a spelling mistake <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah well i mean here yeah, if i make a spelling the mistake, typical it's one <laughs> <laughs> it's not the end of the words but yeah but it's, it's something that is, everyone is creative it's just like understanding how to do it and find what you're passionate about but yeah, everyone is creating. You know, when it comes about defining your own style, usually you, when you start, you learn the style of your teacher. Yeah. And then yeah. When you start trying to find your your own style, what you do is okay. I like this person. I like this time in history. I like this style. And then you start just grabbing a lot of, uh, gather a lot of sources. Then you copy yeah. the A from one, the B from another one, and eventually everything is start to be like um, merging together, and it turns yeah. into your signature, into what is what you like. But I yeah. think is what you say, and then you start copying, but the challenge yeah, you have- is do not stay in the copy stage. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's, it's good to experiment and be brave and just try different things. For example, my copper plate is very similar to Paul. I mean, uh, Paul's one is, is great because it's something he's been doing for years and he's one of the best. And the way he explains uh, the, the geometry of copper plate is amazing. I forgot what I was writing, a practice. Yeah, I was doing I know. Um, <laughs> And he has a particular way of teaching the copper play with with the yeah. rectangles and breaking the letters into all the squares. Yeah, for, for me, it's great uh, to have learned that way because so, it, it makes it makes a lot of sense uh, to me. When you see the letters, you see strokes or you see cubes. Yeah, I, I see these, uh, as you can see, like underneath, I have yeah. this grid mm-hmm. that is kind of forcing me. And it's one for copper plates, one I made with four. Uh, and it's really forcing you to keep the letters tight. Mm-hmm. So it, it's really good for that. But then it also and gives it, you the consistency, the flow yeah. of letters. Yeah. Also yeah. The negative space. Things. It's very important, uh, their breathing uh, as well, because it's like, okay, put in pressure on the downstroke and so exhale and then inhale on the upstroke. So like I love tools and materials. It's, it's something that I am really passionate about. And it's really good when you find that pen that connects well with the paper. And yeah, it's very, very uh, interesting. No, I mentioned before about the kind of evolution of the, the letter. Letter A used to be something like this in Egyptian time. There was the head of a cow, of an ox, actually. Oh, wow. Maybe I put it a bit closer so you can see better. Yeah, perfect. And then it became something like this a bit more simple to make which became then this with the Phoenician so it's really interesting the fact that the alphabet we're using is called phonetic and mm-hmm. it comes from Phoenicians because uh, it was the first uh, culture that creates a writing system that it's a symbol connects to a sound because before with the Egyptian, uh, it was pictograms. So you had some that were phonetics, but mainly they had pictograms. So an image corresponding to a word. 
Yeah. So very interesting that with the Phoenician, for the first time, we have this symbol that is the Aleph. Aleph. That is like, so it has the sound of the A. Ah. Mm-hmm. And it then became with the Greeks, our letter A. Mm. They then traveled to, to Italy and first with the Etruscan, because um, everyone, no, no one talks about the Etruscan, but it's the Etruscan were uh, the ones that had the closer alphabet for, um, in, in Italy where the Roman capitals developed. Mm. So from here we have the uh, Etruscans, which is from where I'm from, by the way. <laughs> That's why I'm. <laughs> I'm so into it. You have it in the blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Etruscan. Actually, they were like a civilization that was very modern. So, for example, the, the Roman, they were not treating women, let's say, that well. While the Etruscan were very cultured, so uh, the women were like a very important, uh, completely equal to men. And they were all about art and culture and music. So it's, it's a very interesting, but we don't have um, lots of uh, information, let's say, wow. about it. It was a long time ago. So we have the Romans, which had different kinds. They had a Roman cursive, which is very interesting. It's something, the A is something like these. And we have our Roman capital that were done with a flat brush and then inscribed Ali, on screen. Your, your screen oh. will be blurry. Yeah, there. Oh, yeah, better now? Yeah. So we have our uh, Roman capitals, which were done with a flat brush uh, and then inscribed on stone. And uh, it's very important because the brush dictates uh, the thick and thin. So uh, it's, it's easier, obviously, to do with a brush to understand all the thick and thin. So for anyone that wants to learn Roman capitals, they're very difficult, uh, but beautiful. And the best thing is using a brush, a flat brush or a nib. So it's mainly so, keeping the consistency of the angle to do. Yeah. Yeah, to create that. And it detects the thick and thin straight mm -hmm. so away, you can see. Mm -hmm. Then we, we have the ancho, that uh, is what they uh, used in um, manuscripts at the beginning, like very beginning of manuscript, there's something like that, that then it develops in, uh, in Europe in all different ways. It's very interesting uh, ways they developed in, the, um, in islands and in the in England mm -hmm. uh, yeah because it developed in beautiful ways right? the book of Kells has like some innovation that then mm -hmm. they were stopped because I think it took a little bit of a more conservative mm -hmm. way with uh, uh with historically but uh, yeah. the book of Kells could have gone could have taken the writing system in my opinion in a whole different level because there were like images connected with letters, ligatures, really like it's, it's very innovative. And then we go to um, and, uh, go a whole evolution of Ancho. Uh, then we have half Ancho. That is the first time that there's the introduction of ascenders and descenders. Mm -hmm. And then we go to Carolingian, which is something that uh, is very close to our menu school. So that's where our letter A, even in printing, which is now like this, it comes from first Ancho and then Carolingian. Mm -hmm. And then we go to the Proto-Gothic, which is a bit more upright, kind of like that, to the Gothic, which is what I showed you before, which is kind of really heavy. And everything evolved mainly because there's the need for speed or save money. Like the, uh, the manuscripts were done on vellum, uh, which is uh, animal skin, and it was very expensive. So they had to find a script that you can fit 
awards in the list space. So mm -hmm. that's why they came up with this compression of the letters, just to save space. But the problem that they have, I'll uh, show you, if, if you write the words minimum, you see what the problem was. I'm writing quite fast to be gothic. It should be done very slowly. Oh, but you can, start, you can start seeing the problems <laughs> that they faced with yeah. words like this. So here is minimum. You cannot distinct the letters. So that's when there was the introduction, for example, of the dots on the eye. Mm. At least you can find that. Oh, there were like, uh, for example, the R done kind of a bit longer like this and a certain decoration added just to this thing from the words. So from here, obviously there was need for legibility now. But mm -hmm. the interesting thing is that all this gave the chance for the first time to, for the printing. So it was mm, differentiating from other uh, writing system all around the world that made it a bit more difficult to create a system for printing and for reproducing, the Latin letter gave the chance because you have just letter repeated so you can cast in in metal and then combine them and create you know, the metal uh, type and be able to print and spread the, the words and the books uh, faster. Now I'm getting in the, into the <laughs> historical modes but <laughs> do like it seems like that my work is very kind of modern and free but it's like for me this is the essential part like my inspiration is the history like without that I would not ever be able to to do the uh, some more modern version of the letters because this is like already a, a huge a uh, huge, huge uh, inspiration. So anyway, from here, we go to the Batard or Basta Secretary, which is a more cursive Gothic. So it's something that like the, similar to the one I did before, mm -hmm. that is a bit more squashed. And then we go to Humanist Mini School, that it's very neat, that uh, the calligraphers really describes, we're looking for legibility, so something like very, neat and then we go to italic which is this form like this going through rond but rond was mainly in france but kind of uh, gave the chance so rond was something like this mm -hmm. there was the round hands and it's kind of the inspiration for copper plate. So copper plate was done with a pointed nib. All of this always been evolving and it's always been done with a quill. Mm -hmm. uh, th now they say there's a kind of legend, uh, urban legend <laughs> going on that a, um, a scribe made a mistake of um, use or uh, cutting the, the quill too pointed. Mm -hmm. So you had to push to get the strokes and that's where the pointed nib comes from oh, and, wow. and this script which is the rond went to England and became because it was a round hand the English round hand so they made it more slanted and more condensed and with a pointed nib you get the the copper plates or round hands which is called copper plate because was the hand that was used by princes to uh, cut on copper and make plates with copper. So that's why uh, copper plates. Oh, wow. Printing, yeah. Okay, so, 
And then we get more of the modern times. There's a, there was a revival in calligraphy in the early 20th century uh, with uh, Edward Johnston uh, that uh, came up with these um, foundational hands that it's very good for teaching. So it's, it's very legible, inspired by the Carolingian minuscule. Uh, and, and then we have kind of more uh, contemporary calligraphy which is more expressive because obviously all the writing, uh, legible writing is done by printing. So calligraphers mm -hmm. have now the chance to be more expressive because this legibility is not an issue anymore. Yeah. So, so yeah. And then there's lots to say with modern days, but <laughs> I could talk for the whole day. <laughs> Just quick question. I mean, yeah, I can yeah. see a massive evolution of writing. Where do you think the writing is evolving now? Now, I think now there's like a huge potential because uh, uh, there's more chance for writing to be something that is unique for each person and people can really take it and not think too much about being legible, more about being creative and be themselves. So I think if it's uh, writing would be taught in a different way, uh, more about instead of copying an alphabet, it would be too uh, about okay, you learn first how to use the knee, uh, do certain strokes, uh, shapes, then really people could use it as more of a form of expression mm -hmm. and everyone has a unique take on it. And is more or less this what you also follow for your own style? Yeah, like for me now, it's all about taking the shape, like what makes A, the letter A, and how can you translate into different things. I'm, now I'm going back to my graffiti, because uh, here I also in Italy, I had the chance of working with an amazing uh, graffiti and mural crew. And uh, I'm working with someone that uh, stitching me a bit of more technique is like a, a go paint and uh, sprays and it's giving me some tricks just so I don't make the same mistake over and over. Mm -hmm. So it's just little tricks or the caps and things. And it's, it's really interesting to translate what I know of letters on a wall. So sometimes I, I treat it as a piece of paper and it's like, no, I can't do it. Cannot yeah, that, that. that was my question. How do you feel with the size of the canvas? I mean, the wall and the paper. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because like it's an extra challenge because as well with sign painting, it's something that you can control a little bit more. Not yeah. that much, but you do a layout and then you paint it on the wall. With the spray and with graffiti there, you have to find your kind of solution to, to things. So it's not the uh, work that I'm right now getting paid for. I'm doing it for myself. It's, it's, like, it's really like made me think about uh, what kind of lettering do I want to do? Uh, it's been like a very interesting challenge for me to, to be like, okay, that's something completely <laughs> different from what you used to on paper. First thing, it's colors. Colors for me, at the beginning was like, wow, I, I don't know how to deal with this. Because for years, for me, it was black uh, or black and white, uh -huh. uh, red and gold. That's it. So now it's like, oh, there's so many sprays, <laughs> so many colors, and it's nice to mix them. So uh -huh. I'm trying to uh, understand. But I think uh, that also understanding colors is a challenge because... Yeah, there are many colors, but not all of them work well. If you do a design with certain colors, if you do it, for instance, the same design with colors that perhaps don't have the right contrast, that they are not opposite or anything, it will not have the same effect. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Like it's it's been very challenging. Maybe like sometimes mixing uh, colors that are too light as well it's it's not a good effect or you think okay i put all the sprays together and it's like oh, i like this combination then you do it on the wall and it's like no that was terrible <laughs> but 
again yeah. if we come back to the whole idea of practice is something that it doesn't happen like this it's all a matter of practicing and practicing and keep on doing it make mistakes makes mistake is is great it's it's fine like i think for me a big um turning point it was accepting the mistakes mm -hmm. so sometimes you think especially in calligraphy oh no i did this letter wrong and you feel bad like at, at some point uh, i think when i was with paul because i was seeing things very schematic uh i had a moment that i was scared of some letters like the s it was very scary because i knew that i was gonna make a mistake my and last was, favorite is the set yeah oh yeah the set. i have two sets in my surname so oh no <laughs> yes you have it <laughs> yeah. connecting the set isn't easy i found it very <laughs> my last one are the, the last favorite are the set the k it could be yeah. beautiful but if you do it wrong it could look extremely no, could be, ugly yeah. but the s as well the s is and now like the the name that i chose uh for my graffiti is actually uh, uh starts with s so it's like it's quite it's a challenge it's like okay no now i'm not scared of you <laughs> i'm gonna try <laughs> that's good uh, it's always good to be um at peace when you we do it with the mistakes because yeah. it's something that if you practice you can improve and you just need to maybe look at it from a different point of view yeah uh, it's 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 really important to to make peace with your mistakes because if you keep on telling yourself off about it you will never enjoy it and mm -hmm. the whole point especially with writing that is something that is so direct so for example if i'm nervous i can see straight away in my writing that is something wrong maybe i'll, I'll write more angular mm -hmm. like a bit less curvy mm -hmm. and i think the worst is being too much uh, about oh no i made this mistake obviously it's good to be critical of your work but for me to to be happy with the stage that you're at so you know that okay i've done a year of calligraphy so that's my level and as long as i am I'm enjoying it i'm happy to 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 do this like i gave whatever i could do uh, whatever i could give and you have to be satisfied as well with the with the moment enjoy the moments instead of always looking for more for years i was never happy because i know i could do better because as well you get to a point especially at the beginning that your your head knows what's wrong and right especially for me look you know the medieval manuscript you have the certain idea of a letter form mm -hmm. which you know that what you're doing is not right but you're not yet prepared you don't have it right that way so mm -hmm. it's a point that is very frustrating like really really frustrating but it's good to to be okay with yourself being okay yeah but i've been doing just for a year and that's you know a good place to be right now yeah. you can always improve it's always good to obviously aim to improve and not stay on that level but it's important to to be okay no, you, you're doing well it's okay all these efforts that you put in it's for something and yeah keeping the work as well the past work it's is a very good thing to do because you can see maybe at the beginning uh how you used to write I, usually I, the first work that I did that threw away I have to say but I looked <laughs> at it before before throwing it away I looked at it and I still remember thinking wow that's a big step something that I have to remember myself constantly is is better done than perfect and yeah. it's a sentence that I always have in my head many times I start to be so critical to what I do that it holds me back even even yeah. for the starting of a project it's just in my head and now i'm starting to i oh, know but this doesn't work like this because it's not technically right blah 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 when i say okay 
stop, write, paint, do it. Eventually after that, I could be critic, but at least I deliver something. Because if yeah, not, you yeah, will yeah, never exactly. do anything. Exactly, exactly. It's really important. Like sometimes what well, well, I tell myself that perfection is a limit in the, in the in a way, because if yeah. you just aim for perfection, you will never, obviously it's something that you have to aim for, but it shouldn't stop you to, to go and try things. Uh, you have to be honest with yourself and with the person you're working for, obviously, mm -hmm. because you cannot, if you know that you cannot deliver, then you shouldn't take the job on or ask someone to help you. Yeah. So I think being honest is one of the main things when you work for yourself. Because, uh, oh, yeah, then I, I didn't finish saying that after book, we decided to, he decided to write a book on copper plates. So uh -huh. I still was with all the clients. So I decided to open my own studio. And then I had to deal with everything by myself. I was like the person dealing with the email, deliveries, material, uh, writing, obviously. <laughs> that was the main bit. Um, and then I think I learned a lot because uh, I had to trust myself and I had to be honest with myself and with the people I was working with, uh, with all my clients, because you have to understand, okay, I, I might be working 10 hours, but I can do it. But first you have to ask yourself, can I do it? How will that affect me? It did affect me a lot at the time. I did not <laughs> understand this. I was like, yeah, yeah, fine. 700 in three days, I'll do it. And I was doing it and I did it. But I ended up for three, two years, three years, um, working all day, every day, nine till 10, uh, sometimes weekends, uh, my holidays were workshop, which is great. I mean, I learned a lot, <laughs> but you have to be, keep on being honest with yourself and understand when it's taking over your life. Otherwise it's the same as working for, for an agency, uh, cause you end up hating your job and it's, it should be something that is still enjoyable. And yeah. it should be something that it's your job, but then you have a hobby. So for me, and the time was very blurry. What was a hobby? What was work? Uh, yeah, it's, it's something that if anyone watching this, thinking of having a career in the passion that you have, something really you have to keep on thinking about this it's like okay but what am i doing outside of this because when you turn your hobby into your job then you have to find a hobby otherwise you go crazy like you can yeah. last for you know, two three years even more yeah. i've edited it for more uh, but then you know otherwise if you're gonna start hating it and yeah it's, yeah it's yeah a shame. Yeah, it's definitely, it happens to me as well. For instance, just by going, for instance, in Porto, when everyone is talking only about letters, I remember that in a point I say, I cannot talk anymore about letters. I mean, I am overwhelmed. And in a point, it's kind of that it talks. And for me, the solution is nature. I mean, I do also a lot of sports like climbing yeah, yeah. and we do a lot of paddle boarding or kayaking. I think that, in places like that, for me, it's impossible to think, oh, the design for this client, the sign I'm going to paint next week, it's impossible. But yeah, if yeah, you don't look for really those cool. spaces, you can keep thinking about it in your house, checking Instagram, comparing yourself with anyone. So I think that having a good balance, I think that is really, really important. No. Yeah, it is. It is. How is that you leave London? and now you are in Italy, how have been this transition and who are your clients? Well, uh, my clients are still the, the London ones. And now, as I mentioned, uh, work online, for example, for Mont Blanc, uh, creating some lessons for the academy. So like they're having an academy that is uh, people working for, for Mont Blanc, uh, mm -hmm. salespeople all of that, that they, they would like to know a little bit more uh, about writing instruments. 
Um, so it's been really fun because in a way I have different subjects. So they're all tailored to their collections. So they have something about Egypt, for example. So I did a lesson on Egyptian hieroglyphs. So I have to research a lot history in the history. That for me is amazing. So it's been a, a really good opportunity to I go a little bit deeper into things that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. And as well, uh, teaching has been helping me consolidating um, what I know, because you have to explain it. Sometimes when you don't have to explain things, it's you, you think you know, but really you don't know. So uh, yeah. when, Teaching is really good for in this sense that so teaching is has been a very uh, important experience for me because it really made me think uh, about uh, why uh, writing is important, why people would like to actually hear about it, mm -hmm. and what sites mm -hmm. as well. So, like I've really found that for me, explaining the whole process of research of breathing, of like sitting in the proper, in, in a good position. It's been really what matters for me about writing, more than copying the perfect alphabet, explaining why the letter is like that. I mean, it's, it's part of it, but it's not the, the essential. Copying an alphabet is not the uh, essential part. If you don't approach it first, in a wider way mm -hmm. it's it's for, for me it's it's not what i want to communicate in in what i've been teaching and in the the lesson that i've been yeah. doing so i think it's, also is that is what helped you to be unique yeah yeah that's that's really and that's the key because that makes you you and that's why people go to you because at the end of the day calligraphers there are many as oh, yeah, painters, yeah, yeah. you know of so course. the difference is in reality think why do people come to me which are my clients and how do they approach me and because at the end of the day it's the same beginners could learn with anyone but why they yeah. choose to learn with you is because it's you, is because it's your style, is because it's your trajectory. So I think that is also very, very important. Of course, yeah. 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 Well, Ali, I think that we have been talking a lot, a lot today. Yes. Thank you very much for all this tour about the world, around the world of letters. And something that I love from you is your videos when you are writing on glass. Uh, yes. You told us that you have in your counter this glass. So would you mind to do a demo for us? Of course, of course. I'm now here. Yeah. Change plate. So this was the <laughs> counter for foods. And now I transform it into my practice glass. Oh, Another yeah. thing, because we were talking about the um, uh, they set up the Chinese paper to use for, for practice with a brush. But glass is another surface. You just wipe it off and you can go all over again. So all of this I started doing because of practicing. So, okay, enough with the talk. I'm gonna write. So the painter's talk. Pain. <laughs> Sometimes can be painful too. <laughs> and...
I don't know if it's going to work, but that's how I work. <laughs> always improvising. Sometimes you get good, sometimes not. <laughs> so here there's an opostrophe. It's good to experiment. Sometimes you get a good experiment, sometimes not, but you have to try. And here we go. Lovely. Really so, nice. Thank you. Lovely. So, uh, as you can see, uh, this glass is been great for, for practicing. Like glass, I've been like looking for um, windows on the street as well when I was in London, I actually found quite a lot. <laughs> You'll be surprised. Every time I would see a piece of glass, there is a window that I could transport. I would just take it with me <laughs> and yeah. take it to my studio. So in my studio in London, I have quite a lot of glass that I could now bring here. So this one was perfect. When I saw this it was like, okay, yeah, this is the right studio. <laughs> no, it's for a me. beautiful space. It's a beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, and also because it have this historical vibe that is very connected with you. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, no, of course, of course. And it's fresh, which is essential for the summer. In Italy. Absolutely. So Ali, thank you very much. I learned a lot with you. I send that with me. I take a massive lesson in history. Also a call to keep learning and to keep researching and stay curious. Thank you. It's, it has been a pleasure learning and talking with you today. Oh, no, thanks a lot for, for having me. And it was always a pleasure to talk about the letter and the history of letters and to you about your experience and the different experience in writing. So uh, thank you so much for thank everyone for, for listening to me. And... And well, let's keep in touch. Obviously, if you want to write to me on Instagram, like just feel free to ask me any question. And yeah. Yeah. So if people would like to get in touch with you, either Instagram or online, how they can find you? Uh, well, Instagram, it's uh, just my name. I was not uh, very creative <laughs> with that. <laughs> it's uh, Alice or Alice. Uh, Mazzilli, double L and double Z, uh -huh. <laughs> complicated surname, <laughs> and and yeah, just yeah, write to me on Instagram. I usually check their messages, so that's the best way, I think. Great, lovely. Yeah. I hope we can see each other again soon. I and know, I know. I hope I can come to Ireland and oh, it will see be the Book of Kells. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. You will be super you. welcome. You will be super welcome. Yeah. And here the type of the, the styles of letters is super rich. Oh yeah. We'll yeah. see. Anyway, Ali, thank you very much. Send you a big, big hug. Oh, thank you. And take care. Yeah, you too. Take care. Great. Goodbye. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.